Great. Thank you very much, Joseph, for that presentation on Dynatrace. Thank you, Chris, as well, for Docker. Uh, I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time. There is our Twitter handle. You can follow us to find out about our user groups and our various workshop events and stuff like that. Uh, so we have been having our summit series uh, since about March, and we've been making announcements. And the summit series hit New York last week on Thursday which is uh, New York is on par with our San Francisco summit. They're the two biggest summits, and we like to announce things. So at the San Francisco summit in February, we announced machine learning, and we announced Elastic File System. Uh, and now, just last week, uh, on Thursday in New York, we announced a brand new service. I didn't even know this was coming. I, I heard about it on, on Thursday night or Friday morning or whenever. It's called uh, Amazon API Gateway. Uh, it's another fully managed service, and it enables developers to basically build an API with no servers. This is the kind of evolution of serverless computing. You might have heard about Lambda, which was announced last November when it became generally available in about March. And it's, you can start now building apps. So first you had servers, and then you had virtualization, and you had virtual servers on your, on your hardware. Then it kind of moved to the public cloud and sort of all the hardware is abstracted and you just have virtual machines or instances. And then you have Docker and EC2 container service and it's further abstraction, charuted uh, <laughs> jails or uh, sort of containers for you know, even smaller instances of your compute. And then the next layer of abstraction, I think we call it, uh, well, well, in our case, Lambda, where you can literally just write your code and you deploy your code to the cloud and you call it and you just pay for iterations of code. So Lambda was the first service we released in that space. Amazon API Gateway could be the second service. So Amazon Ga uh, API Gateway, just roughly showing you what it does, because it's only been out a few days and I haven't had a chance to have a good look at it. Uh, your requests come in, you front them with other AWS services such as CloudFront. This is your API Gateway, uses you might be familiar with CloudWatch to monitor it, and you can say you know, set your na maximum number of transactions on your API. You can set an alarm if you hit more than 50 requests per second on your API. Cache API calls, so anything that's a cacheable API call has got a built-in caching mechanism. But here's the interesting bit. It can interface off the Lambda. We probably need a Lambda icon there. So you can call a function in Java, which will go and get or put an object in S3, or go and get or put uh, uh, an entry into DynamoDB. It can, uh, in the API gateway can interface to any existing Amazon service that we've got. So you've basically put an, an API in front of it, but without any servers. Or an existing publicly accessible endpoint, an existing API endpoint that you want to map with a, with a uh, new function, a new storage, or new Dynamo tables. So I haven't done a great experience. I uh, haven't given you a great description because I haven't had a look at it yet. <laughs> But uh, it's brand new, um, you can create new APIs with no servers, so it's fully managed, it's scaling, it's reliable, all those kind of things you get from the Amazon services. It's three and a half US dollars per million API calls. So, you know, again, pretty cheap. You're doing 10 million API calls, you're paying $35 for a service. You haven't got to make it scalable, you haven't got to make it highly available, that's all done. $35, you know. That's uh, uh, not as much as uh, it used to cost to build these things. Um, you do also pay for your data transfer out, like you do with a lot of Amazon services. You don't pay for a request in, but you pay for data out. And it starts off that the first tier is nine cents per gig of data out per terabyte. Nine cents per terabyte. So pretty cheap data out, but pretty cheap number of calls. So that was the, the first service I wanted to mention. Next one, another completely new service that was announced. Again, I didn't know it was coming. It's called AWS Device Farm. And uh, it's a service that allows Android and Fire OS, Fire OS developers to test their app on a range of hardware devices. So we stock a bunch of devices with a bunch of versions of Android, with a bunch of versions of Fire OS. And you simply upload your app onto AWS Device Farm. It runs the test on a whole fleet of these devices. Um, and it will give you, within minutes, an output of uh, bugs, performance issues. And if you've ever written an app for Android, sometimes you'll find some of them have got a slightly different chipset, or, or, or you know, when they've started something using the Intel processor, some things just, some apps just didn't work on just some devices on some version of Android. And you only find out through testing. And anyone who's running a significant mobile app ends up accumulating piles of apps. 
and then you need piles of apps with piles of versions of OSs so you know what your end user experience is like. As Joseph was saying, you really need to know what the end user experience is like. And without testing it, you don't know. So you know, device testing has become important for mobile developers. So a whole new service to enable you just upload your um, app and then we'll give you the output of that app run on a load of devices. It does integrate with your continuous integration environment, such as Jenkins, so it can be part of your continuous integration and send it off to the device farm, get your results, it's good, do a deploy or push it out. Um, it's no setup, uh, your first 250 device minutes are free. I'm not sure what it costs after that, because it's, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's new. So, uh, three other announcements on, uh, that came out on Thursday. Uh, service catalog, which was, uh, again, they talked about it in March. Oh, sorry, this was announced in reInvent. It's now become generally available. It's a new service. You can use it. Um, it's, you have an identity access management role, or an IAM role you'll be familiar with, and you can set a certain set of services in that particular role's catalog. So, you know, that, that group of ops or whoever it might be can use S3, they can do deployment of this stack into dev stage, and a different role can do deployment into production. And it's, the, the, it's, it's, it's like a service catalog part of CMD, CMDB, but it's become available. Most exciting. AWS Code Commit, on the other hand, is a little bit more exciting, and that is available from Thursday, so you can use it today. If you go into the AWS console, you'll see code commit there. Code commit is our Git compatible source code repository. So um, uh, fully encrypted, it is, um, and again it integrates with your identity access management. So if you've got a big AWS environment, you can keep your code within the environment and you can use your existing roles to access source, Git compatible source code repository. So that's available, um, code commit. The other one is code pipeline, which is our continuous integration tool. Code pipeline will extract out code commit um, it will run your unit tests, it will integrate with existing uh, CI tools like Jenkins and Hudson, um, uh, fire off unit tests, and then the last stage of the CI CD pipeline would be continuous deployment, which is our code deploy product, which is not up there because it's already out. So we've got the full stack now uh, from source code to CI to CD, and it's relatively new for us. And the continuous deployment tool, um, code deploy, was actually based on the internal tool that Amazon had been using for years to do sort of 100 to 200 code releases per day, um, which is called Apollo. It's an internal tool called Apollo. It's obviously AWS EC2 auto scaling aware, so you can do blue green uh, AB deployments. Uh, you can do, it's aware of your auto scaling group changing all the time. They use it for the Amazon website. They've been using it for years, um, and it's like fast, reliable releases with the rollback, and it's now available as code deploy, complemented by code commit and code pipeline. So they all became generally available, so new, new services in the console for everyone to use. Uh, and I will spend just a few more minutes, and then we can socialize outside. Elastic File System was announced. Um, I've got a preview of it on my account, so we'll just have a little look in the, the browser, and I might show you a mounted file system. And I, I tested the I.O on a T2 Micro, which is our smallest instance. Um, I do a DD of dev0, in, in file dev0 and out file to, to the NFS file system, and I'm getting 100 megabytes or 80 or 90 megabytes a second. So saturating a gig nick on a T2 Micro to EFS. So it looks like it's pretty fast. Um, it's elastic. You, do, you don't have to specify a size of your file system. So if you've ever provisioned a NAS volume, you have to choose the size and then you might be able to grow it. This you just provision and you pay for what you use. You use one gig, you pay for one gig. And it's uh, 30 cents a gig, if I remember rightly. So if you've got a small dock route, it's pretty handy. You'll be paying 30 cents a month for a gig of stuff shared along a huge number of EC2 instances. It's built for scale. So. We'll have a little look at EFS, because uh, it's in preview at the moment, but I've got it enabled on my account, so I can show it to you here. So, uh, Elastic File System in preview, fully managed file systems for EC2. So there's a few that I've got in there. There's actually not a great deal to it. Uh, you just say create file system. Um, I'll put it in my default VPC. 
Um, I'll have an endpoint in each of the availability zones, um, and I'll apply a security group to each endpoint. Tax uh, name, and I'll call it uh, SG user group. Demo, even. Review and create, there we go, my three availability zones, my security group, my tag, create file system. So it couldn't be easier to create a NAS volume, and there's effectively no cost while um, there's nothing in it, and you only pay for the stuff that's uh, being used. So success, uh, I'll be surprised if it's available that quick, but it says available. <coughs> now, uh, in terms of my demo, I've got one here with 37 megabytes. I did this actually for the WordPress demo, I've got it installed on here. So uh, there's a, another one, again, three, three uh, subnets it's connected to. There's the DNS names, there's a DNS name for each of the endpoints. But more importantly, this, this really handy EC2 mount instructions. Uh, you install NFS utils, so it tells you what to do. Uh, make a mount point, then sudo mount minus T mount type NFS v4, because it's NFS v4. Then this command here, uh, curl minus s of your um, uh, local loopback metadata, it will give you the availability zone you're in, so you can use that programmatically for each of your availability zones. That's your NFS file system name and mount on slash EFS. Now, I'll briefly show you the performance if you want to see what it looks like. And my two running instances both mount my file system. Grab my instance name. Okay, you can connect to that. So there is my uh, mounted EFS uh, in US West 2. It gives you a slightly weird thing for size because, as I said, it's an elastic file system. There is no file system size, so I don't know what it's interpreting in for it. I've got it mounted on this location. So if I go there, at the same time, I'll go to EFS. Uh, I've just handily saved my DD command. Oops. Uh, DD in file dev0, which is a bunch of zero data. Out file var www html big file block size 1024k count equals a thousand. I'm probably going to start off with a smaller one, but that will write a thousand uh, one megabyte blocks, which I think we'll agree is probably about a gigabyte of data. And if the EFS is performing, it will give me the time it's taken to write that. There we go, thousand records in, thousand records out, 79 megabytes a second. So I was quite impressed with that for an NFS file system, 100 megabytes a second, that's like 650 megabits over the wire on a T2 micro. So uh, that was just a quick look at it to see what's there. And uh, so a couple of other things to note, reInvent, this slide's a bit out of date, it doesn't say save the date registration open to make, registration's open for reInvent. It's in October the 6th and the 9th, it's the annual developer conference, it's in Las Vegas. Everyone's welcome to go, it's a week-long set of events. Got to get to Las Vegas and it does cost money for the conference, but there's hundreds of sessions at, at, uh, at reInvent. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's growing in size, it's like 10,000 people or something now. Uh, this is our AWS user group, it's your user group as much as it is mine. So you want to speak, come and speak, let me know. You want to host at your venue? We could probably host at your venue as well. I think we were speaking to someone about hosting. Um, and uh, yeah, stay in touch on the Meetup website. Thank you very much. Uh, so we can enjoy a, a Coke bit of soft drinks or there's a beer tap out there. If you've got a, a few minutes, we can socialize. So stick around. <laughs>